But the driver didn't stop there. He kept on going, and troopers hit his car again to keep him from getting away. Eventually, troopers blocked him in. APD says it was able to get clearance from the airport to fly in their airspace to track the suspect down. Troopers took him into custody. Now to a Fox 5 exclusive. Authorities are investigating. Austin are in the Good Day Atlanta studio this morning with the details. But first, let's get a look at our top stories this morning. And you'll get a precise answer. 100 years old plus four months. Yes, Sando is a centenarian and then some. And for at least a quarter of that time, he's been deep under the spell. Of this majestic beauty. Built in 1927. It's almost as old as I am. This is a 1927 Page Theater pipe organ. First built for a Chicago radio station, then installed for years at a theater in Michigan. Eventually, the massive, ornate instrument ended up in Atlanta and in the hands of the local chapter of the American Theater Organ Society. Well, it had been stored in a trailer for five years, and you can imagine what happened. Happened. Uh, actually, some squirrels got in the, in the trailer and made a nest all throughout the organ, so we had to clean it out good. And it wasn't in very good shape. Sando worked on fixing it up, but what the page really needed was a home. And this is where the Jack Sandow story comes in. He knew the key people at DeKalb County Schools. They were designing the high school. He got them to design the pipe chambers, and this organ found a home. A theater pipe organ in a high school, uh, there's only one in all of Georgia, and it's this one. Stevenson High School in Stone Mountain is that school. And this Saturday, it'll host a belated 100th birthday celebration for Jack Sando. The Grand Page will be a star of the party, of course. But the true star is the man who made sure the music plays on. He, he did everything, and he did all of this certainly well into his 90s and uh, god bless he's still around to enjoy it all and he loves to listen to the theater organ oh it's just it's a dream come true i told the guys i said please get this organ finished before i die because <laughs> all the labor i put into it i wanted to make sure that, that, that it, it was finished shape of the ice cream bar is what caused the problem and drove Chinese internet censors to take action. One 1989 protester, now famously known as the Tank Man, confronted a tank during the incident. This image is now widely considered the symbol of the pro-democracy protest. For decades, information about the massive demonstration has been banned across China, fearful of retaliation from the Communist Party. Older generations in the country often avoid talking about it, so it's been fading from the minds of the younger generations. Lee, like most of his fans, are part of a later generation, so it's unlikely they're familiar with the details. Because of it, some see Lee's ice cream bar incident as one born out of ignorance. Curiously, Beijing's apparent censorship of his live stream has had the opposite effect. Media reports say it sparked younger people to ask older family members about what happened during the 1989 protests. Lee's team explained away the live stream cutoff as due to a technical malfunction. Another of Lee's scheduled streams also didn't air the Sunday afterward. Lee's agency didn't respond to a request for comment before airtime. Shanghai May investigation started Friday after three homes in the city's historic district burned to the ground. Today's Lindsay Tooman is live at the Morrow Police Department with more. Lindsay, good morning. Good morning to you, Bonk. Police say at around 8.45 Friday night, they believe there was some kind of gathering in one of those homes. By midnight, the homes were up in flames, and by Saturday morning, they were a complete loss. I apologize for that. So police uh, are now investigating this. They arrested those three teenagers after that investigation. They say that the homes went up in flames uh, Friday night and they began investigating right about then as well. They let the cause of the fire was uh, determined to be an arson and Mara police say they met with witnesses. They reviewed security camera video, video and that's what led to the arrest of those teenagers. Those homes were meant to be filled up with restaurants and shops as a way to revitalize the area. Thank you.
a victim now? A long time I'm, coming? I got, I'm embracing my inner Democrat. In front of my... <laughs> Chris, what did you do to this school district? They're all they're all teed up to have a, a CRT <clears throat> meeting. You write an article about it, and all of a sudden they cancel the meeting. What happened? Yeah, so basically Poway School District is a school district that's uh, located slightly outside of San Diego, down in Southern California. And uh, they had a presentation in, on CRT in around March, and they denied ever using uh, CRT in schools. And but the point is, like, if you're having a presentation, well, then you got, clearly are using CRT. So I, a leak email was sent to me basically going over the curriculum of the meeting that they had, uh, showed the materials they were covering, the authors that they were covering, and uh, the pretty much the the whole the what they were trying to do was just basically do a um, a session on showing the educators what critical race theory was about because one of the diverse equity something inclusion members of the committee requested to know more about it. So the school decided to take it upon themselves and and have a meeting and show what uh, CRT was about. Clearly, it was going to be an objective meeting showing, you know, all the good and bad of CRT, nothing, you know, indoctrinating about it, obviously. Obviously. <laughs> and, and then, so, when I got hold of it, I published the letter, uh, published the article uh, based on the email. The email, you know, it showed different books about CRT. It was heavily focusing on Kimberly Crenshaw and other CRT enthusiasts. And when I published, basically, the contents of the email, you know, you know word by word, the CRT, uh, the uh, the school district got a hold of it and decided to cancel the meeting because allegedly I misconstrued what they said. Even though all I did was just really report the contents of the email and offer my opinion, but that's uh yeah. So it basically, this has been going on in you know, schools around the country that they're denying it and then kind of getting exposed. So, so so Chris, why not have the meeting uh, to clarify? Percent of blacks live below the federally defined level of poverty, eighty-seven percent. 20 years later, that number had reduced to 47%, a 40 percentage point drop in 20 years, the greatest 20 year period of economic expansion for black people in American history. Now, clearly 1940 was far more racist than 2022. There was still Jim Crow. The civil rights acts of the sixties had not been passed. Brown versus board of education that struck down separate but equal was still 14 years away. No, this is about the breakdown of the family because the job of the parent is to inoculate the children against this kind of nonsense, to make sure they don't refer to women as bees and H's. But when you don't have that in the household, you are in deep, deep voodoo. Don't go by me. Tupac Shakur, the poet of the streets, once said, quote, I know for a fact that had I had a father, I would have been more confident. I would have been more disciplined. A woman cannot raise a man. End of quote. So send your cards and letters, angry cards and letters to Tupac. He'll get him up there. Another caller. Percent of blacks live below the federally defined level of poverty. 87%. 20 years later, that number had reduced to 47%. A 40% percentage point drop in 20 years, the greatest 20 year period of economic expansion for black people in American history. Now, clearly 1940 was far more racist than 2022. There was still Jim Crow. The civil rights acts of the sixties had not been passed. Brown versus board of education that struck down separate but equal was still 14 years away. No, this is about the breakdown of the family because the job of the parent is to inoculate the children against this kind of nonsense, to make sure they don't refer to women as bees and H's. But when you don't have that in the household, you are in deep, deep voodoo. Don't go by me. And will you get anything in return? This past weekend, NTD's Paul Graney spoke with the president of AMAC Action. It's an advocacy group for older Americans. Here's their conversation. We're here at the Western Conservative Summit in Denver, Colorado. It's great for all of you to join us. We're joined now by Bob Carlstrom. He's the president of AMAC Action, is the advocacy affiliate of the Association of Mature American Citizens, which represents Americans over 50 years of age. Bob, great to see you. Thanks for coming. It's good to be with you. You're in Washington, D.C. 
What exactly is happening there to help older Americans? Well, I think one thing that's not happening is that this Congress is not seriously dealing with Social Security. Social Security insolvency will occur in about 2032. And what that means is that it's going to switch to a cash basis, money in, money out. Because the money that's been in the principal is now declining. The interest uh, that was in there is now gone. You had a federal government that borrowed $3.1 trillion from the Social Security Trust Fund and offered you Treasury notes, IOUs, you know, which exacts no confidence that it'll ever be repaid. Was this and both parties who agreed me? to this? I think what's happened in, in Washington, many people are afraid to bring it up because they don't want to be accused once again of throwing grandma off the cliff. But we have to deal with it. And AMAC has recommended what's called the Social Security Guarantee, which makes some smart adjustments in the basic statute, assures a cost of living adjustment increase to all beneficiaries, but particularly weighted a bit more to those who need it the most. And we don't raise the retirement age. We still keep that at 62. But Congress really needs to develop the courage in both parties to take it on. How likely are your changes to be implemented? And what do you say to Americans who are worried they may not be and things won't be fixed? Well, uh, you know, as, as long as the impasse uh, continues, we've got a problem. With the talks of gun rights restrictions getting heated, how practical are these regulations in real life? And where are the boundaries? I talked to Lieutenant Colonel Alan West to get his perspective. Lieutenant Colonel Alan West, thank you again for joining us. It's always a pleasure, Steve. Uh, President Biden has come out with pretty strong statements uh, that he's, he's pushing for a serious crackdown on gun rights restrictions. Um, which, what's the temperature right now? Well, the temperature is that we don't want to go down the path of what we just saw Justin Trudeau announce up in Canada, where you will not have any buying, selling, uh, trading, or the import of uh, firearms. The Second Amendment is an enumerated right to citizens here in the United States of America. It is codified in our rule of law. And it is very troubling and disconcerting when you have the President of the United States of America, who is supposed to uphold the Constitution, comes out and says that uh, the Second Amendment is not absolute. Well, if you're going to pick and choose which one of our Bill of Rights is not absolute, where does it start, start, and where does it end? And so I see this as a reaction from the progressive socialist left because they understand that here's a window of opportunity to once again emotionalize a tragedy, uh, and as Rahm Emanuel said, never let a good crisis go to waste so that they can undermine the Second Amendment, and we cannot allow that to happen. Colonel West, what do you say? Stephen Williford was the simple citizen who had an AR-15, ran out of his house without shoes, and engaged that gunman, and he neutralized him. The legal law-abiding responsible gun owners should not be held accountable or responsible for the failures of government, the failures for the background check system, and the failures uh, and the evil actions of individuals. Six times in Uvalde, there were call-outs, police call-outs to the home of that gunman. 21 times there were call-outs to the home of Nicholas Cruz, who was the Parkland shooter. Why were those individuals not put into a system so that they would not be able to go out and purchase firearms? In Buffalo, mental uh, treatments and evaluation, but he was let go, released, and no, never any follow-up. So that's where we need to start. So is there a system in place right now to track these mental uh, patients when they're inbound, or is that what you're suggesting? That's what I'm suggesting. And, of course, everyone comes out with the, the red flag laws. But what ends up happening is that, you know, the, the law-abiding citizen gets caught up in a red flag law. Case in point, uh, November 2018, I believe, Ferndale, Maryland, Gary J. Willis, a 61-year-old man, is shot and killed at 5.30 in the morning in his own home. Police officers show up to serve a red flag uh, warrant against him. To this day, no one knows who those officers were. No one knows where that red flag warrant came from. Now, if you want to know the right way to do it, I have some great friends at the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office down in Florida. They do it the right way. 
they bring individuals in, if they see some disturbing things on social media, they continue to follow and track these individuals. If it escalates, then they kick in, you know, a, a gun confiscation of that individual. But they have built a case. And this is not what I think that we want to see uh, just happening, where folks just, you can go out and call, well, you know that Alan West guy, I'm kind of worried about him. You may want to go show up at his door and uh, confiscate his weapons. That's what some people are talking about. We don't want to have that in America. Lieutenant Colonel Alan West, thank you. Always a pleasure, Steve. Hey, inflation, how you doing there, buddy? You hanging in there? Yeah, ain't got no other choice, do you? tested in the fight with the strength to fight biden pelosi and the wolf mob stand with our police and lock down our border and that's what i'll bring to congress I'm